Back on. Yes, yes, look at that. The most elegant man of the bus. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> he have to the exactly. <laughs> First impression. That's right. Okay. You need to sit down. We might need to sit down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Okay. Good biblical words. I'm sorry, Vienna and Lot. Thank you, partner. I'm sorry. <laughs> We have been working on the ruins of um, the seven churches and um, we are on the fifth one which is Philadelphia and it is very interesting to note how Christ addressed each church and we started from the Pegamo where he addressed them as the compromising church and the corrupt church, the Titeria, and then also Smyrna as the persecuted church, the dead church as Sardis, where we're coming from. And this one, he addressed it as the Philadelphia church, the faithful church. I've looked and read and preached with this scripture for the last 25 years, and I have always looked at how the same person cries would introduce himself to every one of these church. Starting from the Pergamon church, he introduced himself as, these are the words of him who has the sharp double-edged sword. The corrupt church, he introduced himself as the son of God whose eyes are blazing fire and whose feet are banished bronze. And he introduced himself to the minor church as the the first and the last who died and who rose again and we just came from Sardis he introduced himself to them as the words of him who holds the seven spirits of God and the seven stars then he come to this church Philadelphia church which is the the faithful church he introduced himself as these are the words of him who is holy and true and who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. Now, Philadelphia Church was a church that was commended for their faithfulness. And we look at it that the name Philadelphia was named after the king, um, Pergamon king, who is Atalios Philadelphus. And the name Philadelphia is a Greek, which is also like similar to Philadelphus, which is Philadelphia, meaning brotherly love. And um, we were, we've just been told by um, Ohan that um, how the king remained loyal and 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 showed love to his brother even though they wanted to make them to become enemies instigate themselves against themselves but how he remained faithful and loyal now this church is a church that christ jesus sent a message to and i want us to read from revelation chapter number three verse number seven Pastor David, if you can read from your place to the angel of the church in Philadelphia writes, These are the words of him who is holy and true, who holds the key of David. What he opens, no one can shut, and what he shuts, no one can open. I know your deeds. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength, yet you have kept my word and not deny my name. I will make those who are of the synagogues of Satan, who claim to be Jew, though they are not, but are liars. I will make them come and fall down at your feet, and acknowledge that I have loved you. Ten, since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to tell those who live on the earth. 11. I am coming soon. 
hold on to what you have so that no one take your crown. 12. Those who are victorious, I will make pillars in the temple of my God. Never again will they leave, leave it. I will write on them the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. And I will also write on them my new name. 13. It's okay. Thank you. We can read later on. So Christ opened his letter to the church in Philadelphia by um, telling them and showing them how sovereign he God is. He said he's a true God and he also made them to understand he's a holy God. And according to 1 Peter, 1 Peter will tell us that um, we should be holy for he God is a holy God. So we as ministers and also as children of God, we are mandated to impart grace to people that we minister to to live to become like Christ to be the holy people and also to live in order to be through because the Bible tells us about who he is and what he expects us to be now he also said I know your deeds and every one of those churches the seven churches every one of them he would address them he said I know your deeds I know your deeds it tells us that we are serving a God who is not blinded by what we do and uh, who knows everything about us from the ends before the, the end of anything he knows it from the beginning and Hebrew will tell us according to the 413 that all creation and nothing in all creation is hidden from his sight and everything within creation and whatever we are doing even in secret is laid bare before him. So it gives us an assurance that our God knows us and he knows what we are doing and he expects us and as a church to be also to be aware of who he is that we can't hide anything from him. Before we even communicate to him, he knows it. I always still tell people, we pray not because we are telling God of what our needs are, because he already knows it before we started. We are praying because it is a commitment and a trust in him that we cannot help ourselves. We are only coming before you to help us. Now, he also said to the church that you have hold on to your uh, I know your deeds. I know you have little strength, yet you have kept my word. Now, what is he trying to say? He's trying to say, I'm aware of your limitation. I know you have little strength, but yet you have kept my word. Every one of us, we have limitations. There are things he knows physically we can't, but his grace is always sufficient for us. As we stand here today, there are things sometimes we don't have control over, but he knows that when we trust him, he will give us the control over such things. And then he says that, but you have kept my word. Even though you have little strength, if you draw strength in me, if you draw hope in me, I'll give you the much strength you need. Apostle Paul said, I pray to God that the, 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 the enemy who has buffeted me, God should take it away from me three times. And he didn't. He said, no, it's not meant to be taken away. My grace is sufficient for you in that state. So there are certain things that are not meant to be taken away by God. They are meant for us to go through because it equips us, it empowers us, it strengthens us, it energizes us, it gives us more hope to trust in God. Because Psalm 119 verse number 49 and 50 will tell us that remember your word to your creator. It is that word that has given me hope. Even though I'm suffering, the comfort I draw from you is that your word, your promises preserves my life. So even though when we are going through challenging moments and troubling times, it is the inspiration, it's the promises of God, it's the word that God has given unto us that gives us hope. He said to the church in Philadelphia here, he says, I know you have little strength, yet in your little strength, you have kept my word. I know you have challenges. In your challenges, you have kept my word. I know you are going through tribulation, there are paganism all around, people doing a whole lot of things. Um, Church of Pergamon is compromised. You could have also compromised. 
the church in Tatiria, we see the church, he rebuked them. You could have also done same. But in your little strength, you still kept uh, hold, holding on to your faith. I want to encourage every one of us here. Having Jesus and ministering for him as of his workers, um, it, it, life will not be as easy as we want it. But his grace will always be sufficient for us. We should always draw strength. We should always draw energy from him to keep on going. And finally, he says, you have remained, you have remained faithful and you have not denied my name. So the believers in Philadelphia will not worship or participate in any other worship that was happening in and around them. We are living in the world, but we should not be like the world. Mm -hmm. We are living in the world, we should empower the, the, the people looking at us, the people we are leading, the people God has entrusted to our care. They, they will look at us first before they look at the world. We should always make sure that what we say are in conformity to what God's word says. And finally, he says that you have not denied my name, you have not denied me. So, whatever we are going through today, there were three things that they have. He commended the church. You have kept my word. You have not denied my name. There was no complaint about this church like other churches. Like you have a reputation of being alive, but you are dead. That you do this and do that. As for this church, there was no complaint, but there was only a counsel and a warning. He said, hold fast to what you have, so that no one will take your crown. Whatever we are doing, there is a crown for us. One day, when we appear before his judgment seat, he will say, well done, you faithful servant, come and rest. I am praying that our labor will not be in vain because Paul wrote to the church in Corinth and he told them 1557, 1558, and he said, your labor in the Lord will never be in vain. And that's what we are looking forward to. And he's telling the church in Philadelphia, he said, put firm so that this crown, you will not lose it. Because if you don't continue on your faithfulness and your steadfastness, you can lose your crown. But there is the last thing he told them, there was, it was a challenge. He who overcomes will be a pillar in the, in the temple of my God. He who overcomes, that's the 12th and the 13th verse when he read. He who overcomes, he will be a pillar in the temple of my God. Now, remember, what sustains a pillar is the foundation. So Christ Jesus is saying that if we're able to overcome challenges and tribulations that comes our way, becoming faithful servants of him, sons and daughters of zion as we minister in the gospel of our lord jesus christ he will sustain us and as a pillar in the church of god meaning that we will always forever be in his presence and his presence will continuously be around us and abound on us and it is the presence and the peace of god that keeps us going i want to encourage each and every one of us here today as i was coming i said i'm not coming for sightseeing I'm coming for a prophetic journey, a journey where I will have an encounter with God. Every sight I find myself, I pray in the spirit. If there was a rebuke, I say, God, I pray that this will not be my portion. I will live a life full of um, your word, full of your conviction, full of power, full of strength. If there was a commendation, I said, this will be my portion. Anything that I find in any place will visit, it is always what I pray for. In two minutes, each and every one of us have a relationship with God and he has assigned us. He has sent us out to go and preach the gospel, heal the sick, heal the blind, convert people, bring them to the saving grace. Let us ask God to grant us strength, to grant us power. There are sometimes we are human beings, we have needs as well, Sometimes our faith goes down a little bit. We are a bit shaking here and there. But let's pray that God will help us to hold firm and fast to the end. In two minutes, if you can say this prayer, wherever you are, in the silence of your heart, just communicate to God how you want God to meet you at the point of your need. More wisdom, more knowledge, more understanding, more intimate relationship. May God show you strength when your faith goes down, when things are shaking in your life. 
when you are being troubled physically that and spiritually and emotional that you don't want others to know or see how you want God to respond to you. In two minutes, let's talk to God in the silence of our heart. In the name of Jesus. Just one minute, this song, it says, I have no power of my own. I depend on you, Holy Spirit. I have no power of my own. I have no power of my own. I have no power of my own. I depend on you, Holy Spirit. I have no power of my own. That's all the song. Please help me sing it. I have no power of my own. I have no power of my own. I depend on you, Holy Spirit. I have no I'm listening. I have, I have no power of my own. Oh, Jesus. I have no power of my own. I depend on you, Holy Spirit. I have no. That was labeled as the faithful church. Paul said, We are temple of God. We are the church of Christ. We pray that oh God help us to be faithful in all things. Help us to teach our followers to be faithful. You introduce yourself as a holy and true God. Help us to continuously be faithful to you, to be true to you, and to be holy to you. We pray that when all hopes are almost getting lost. Show yourself strong in our lives. Keep us going. Keep our ministry going. Sickness is never a portion. Disappointment is never a portion. We pray for fever. We pray for grace. We pray for oil. We pray for new strength, new insight, new revelations. Show yourself strong in our personal life. Keep us strength. Keep us strong. Keep us empowered. Keep us healthy, O oh God. And let your will be done. In the name of the God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you.